morning. Good morning and good morning. It's raining outside. It's cold, I'm sure. But it's the joy of the Lord on the inside. You let the joy of the Lord be your strength on today. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Choose to rejoice. Why don't you go ahead and choose early? That way your, your, your atmosphere is already set. Choose to rejoice. I choose to let the garment of praise be my attire. I choose to let the garment of praise be my attire. And we need to choose that before we get out there interacting with people. The joy of the Lord really is my strength. He is my hope. He's my expectation of good. He is where I'm looking for security and comfort. Yes, God brings people in our lives so that we are able to interact with them. But the thing is, is that God really should be our source. Good morning to our children. Hey, Kennedy. Hey there, Tatiana, Kendall, and Ava. Good morning, Colin and Kobe. Good morning to all of our little people. Good morning to all you grown folk, too. How are you all? Hope you're well. Hope you rested well. Robert Jr. Okay, sorry. Hey, y'all. All right, let's get started. I'm going to try to work within my time restraints today. I'm going to try. Hey. All right, so today we're talking about uh, preparing for our next. That's been something that's been resonating in my spirit, oh my gosh, for months, for months. I believe God has something for us. I'm not talking about your name and lights. Let me be clear. There's a bug. I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't do bugs. Hey, Aaliyah. All right. I do kill them. Sorry. All right, so we've been talking about... Preparing, right, thank you, Pastor Whitaker. Uh, preparing for our next. And I don't believe it's something like, you know, um, my name's going to be on billboards or everybody's going to know my name. I got him, girl. Let me just say, uh, I, I might be scared, but I'm going to kill him in the process because this is not your house. This is my house and the Lord's house and Harvey's house. And I can't remember the other animal's name. But anyway, um, yeah. So God is preparing us for our next, whatever that entails. And I'm not just saying 2020. I'm just saying wherever God is taking us, whatever he's trying to do inside of you, whatever he's trying to get you to, we can put off pursuing God for so long. We can put off making God's word a priority, uh, fulfilling our his call on our lives. We can be so busy, like we talked about yesterday with Martha. We can be so encumbered about with many things that distract us from the most important thing. We can be so consumed with what the world tells us we should be doing that we don't do the things that honor God. We can be so overwhelmed by what we don't have that we forget that our praise should be for what we do have. Because if you keep looking at what you don't have, you will miss what God is already doing in your life. You will be oblivious to the blessings of God in your life. And But God wants you to be clear that he has a next prepared for you. He has greater in store for us. He has peace waiting for us. He has joy already set for us. He has a table prepared for us in the presence of our enemies. He ain't scared. Hey, Neshayla Josiah. Good morning. And he's not, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to cower down. We don't have to withdraw because God is trying to catapult us forward. We can trust God to order our steps. You know, the scripture, one of the scriptures that always resonates in my mind and I think about often is that passage in the New Testament that tells us to study, to be quiet because there's a time to speak and there's a time not to. There's a time for us to, to uh, and I think Ecclesiastes talks about that. There's a time to laugh. There's a time to cry. There's a time to do all, but we need to know what season. That's another word that resonates. It is you need to know what season you're in. I want to talk about Elisha today. And we're looking at 1 Kings, and I did want to read this to you because I, I know that I've covered this before, but I want to make sure that you get the concept, okay? So we're looking at 1 Kings chapter 19. I'm not going to read all of that. I'm going to read about five verses, I think. So let me read that to you real quick, okay? He says, oh, I guess I have to go over here. 
He says, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. This is after um, Elijah is tired and weary and whatever the case may be. And um, he says, you know, I've been very uh, jealous for you and I'm just tired. You need to know your season. And God had already been preparing someone to assume the responsibilities of uh, Elijah. Good morning, my brother. To assume the responsibilities of Elijah. Elijah, And he's telling him, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go and anoint Hez, uh, Jehu, the son of Nimshi, uh, to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abimelech. Uh, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room, in your place. I've already got somebody prepared. That's your next. You may not know what you per God's preparing you for. But the most important thing is to learn all you can in this season. To learn all you're supposed to in this season. To get all the tools you need for your next. To get all the, the, the benefits you need to, so that you can succeed in your next season. Hey, Trenton Titus, we need to be clear that you don't always know which way you're going. But the scripture says, he knows the way that I take. And when he has tried me, I'm not coming out like copper. I'm not coming out like paper. I'm not coming out like wood. I'm not coming out so that I am destructible. I am coming out like pure gold. What does gold do? Gold may change forms, but it is never loses its value. If you put it in heat, it may uh, melt, but when you let it get back to another season, it hardens and begins to shine. We need to be clear that God will take us through seasons where we are to gather, we are to learn, we are to empower, we are to be feel, filling ourselves with, with the word of God, but it prepares us for what's next. Sometimes we try to see what's next. You don't always see. You only see what's right in front of you unless the Lord shows you, but we can trust his hand. We can trust him to guide us. We can trust his direction. Let me read on. And it shall come to pass. I tell you, I love that phrase because it talks about the progression of a season, progressions of time, that things happen in a strategic manner. Another word right there, a strategic to a strategic manner. And it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. Listen, God's got everybody strategically planned. He's got everybody in their place. And when we get in our place, you don't have to worry about somebody else's. Just be where you're supposed to be and be ready. Be where you're supposed to be and be ready. He says, Jehu shall slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Elisha was a farmer, but God prepared him for this thing. God prepared him to be the prophet in the place of Elijah. Was he a son of, the, of, the, of a prophet? No. Just because it looks like you don't fit there doesn't mean that God ain't called you there. You better catch that. Just because it looks like you don't fit there doesn't mean that God hasn't called you there. We need to be clear that God will call us to things that look like they're greater than I than we are. He will cause us to sit in places that look like they're bigger than we are. He says your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. He's saying the things I've invested and placed in you will catapult you into your next. Your gift, what you are designed to do, what I have invested in you. We're going to talk about investment on tomorrow, I think it is. And what God has invested in you, he wants a harvest from. You can lay low all you want. You still got to give an account for the gifts he's placed in you, for the anointing he's put on you, the calling he has on your life. He, he called Elisha, but where was Elisha when Elijah passed by him? He was working in the field. He wasn't sitting there waiting on somebody to come get him to be prophet. He was doing work. He was busy. He was accomplishing great things. He was already doing more than others. He was plying, I think the scripture says, with seven yoke of oxen. Whether it was seven oxen or it was 14, he was already doing phenomenal things. What are you doing? What are you doing to, to capitalize on the things that God has placed in you? You don't have to open the door. You just have to be ready when the door opens. Help us to be ready when the door opens. Help us to be ready when the door opens.
Yet, verse 18, yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel. Sometimes we feel like we're the only ones. The enemy would make you feel like you're the only one going through. You're the only one with tragedy. You're the only one suffering. You're the only one suffering with depression and heaviness and no joy and lackluster. And uh, nobody likes you. You don't have any friends. He will paint that picture that you're the only ones whose spouse is crazy. I ain't got one so I can talk about y'all. But you, he will make this picture and you will become frustrated and overwhelmed because of what you feel. Remember I told you the other day, feelings will lie to you. You don't live by your feelings. You don't let them control you. The Bible says, scripture tells us that we should bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We should lock up those feelings that are contrary to the word of God. Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is knowledge? What we know about God. If it says something contrary to the word of God, even if it's about you, even if you've said it about yourself, it's a lie. Let God be true and every man and woman be a liar. We must decide to agree with the word of God. We must decide that what God says about us is what is true. I'm healed because he says I'm healed. Do I have problems in my body? Sure do. My hip, my knee, my ankle. My eyes are very, I got all of that. But I tell you what, I'm still believing that God is still Jehovah Rapha. He is still a healer. He heals us. The Bible says he heals us of all our diseases. He says there will not be a feeble one among us. There will not be a weak one among us. I believe the word of God and I'm going to keep pressing until then. And until the day is done, we choose what we're going to believe. Let me read. I'm sorry. You're not alone. Even in this holiday season, you are not alone. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. Remember, if the enemy comes, he's coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. It's, it's, I'm not saying you don't grieve. I'm not saying you don't have pains. I'm not saying you don't have to be honest about where you are. Yes, but that's not my residence. This is temporary. This is temporary. I will not live here forever. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's getting better every day because the joy of the Lord is my strength. He will uphold me with the right hand of his righteousness. He says, though it with his right hand, God will be there for us to help carry us through. He says, I've got 7,000 who have not even bowed their knees to Baal. They've not given, they, they've not turned coat. They've not decided to not follow God. It's clear. And every mouth which has not kissed him. They've not given their allegiance to someone else. There are others who are just like you, who are going through and who decide every day, I'm getting up, I'm going for it. I'm getting up, I'm going for it. My body may be aching, but I'm getting up and I'm going for it. My mind may not be clear, but I know that God gives me clarity. He he gives me peace. He gives me joy because my season may be a, a valley. It may be a dark season, but it's just a season to something else tomorrow. So he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. I've got another minute. Who, oh, who was plowing with 12, not seven, 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And then this is what Elijah, Elisha does. He left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me, I pray thee. He was ready. He was ready. He was ready to go deeper. He was ready to go to his next. Commit your works to the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Commit yourself to him. Dedicate yourself to him. Make it a priority to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all righteousness, that all these things, what things, the things that other people are seeking after, they'll be added to you. He says, go back again for what I've done to thee. He's saying, make sure you want to come now. But God had already told Elijah who to go and anoint. If somebody comes, and I'm not talking about these false prophets, but a person who really is, you know that they're serving God, and they speak to you and tell you, this is what the Lord says, are you ready for it? Or are you saying, well, I got to go spend, you know, a week or two uh, dealing with some things. You need to stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. Dedicate yourself to the Lord. You may not be, you may never see your name in life, but lights, but you ought to be ready to honor God and to minister where he tells you to. If it's going to see somebody who's in the nursing home, go and be a blessing. If it's putting, giving a word to a cashier, just an encouragement. We're called to be a blessing. 
You are called to be a blessing. You should want to bless. The Bible says we should be given to hospitality. We should be fond of strangers. I'm not saying you should go up to people that you don't know and start, you know, giving out money that you don't have. I'm saying that we should find ourselves being hospitable. We should find ourselves loving people. We should want to love. Verse 21, he returned back from following him, took a yoke of oxen, slew them. He took his pad, he took those oxen, which represented his present, and he decided, I'm getting rid of it because I'm going into my next. I'm going into my next. And he slew them and he boiled their flesh with the instrument and gave it unto the people, and they ate. That signified my party time is over, and I am clear that I am going to um, go to my next. Be ready, beloved. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. This was a man who was successful in his own right. He was already doing things, but he humbled himself and began to serve the man of God. He humbled himself. And the Bible says about Elisha that he was the one who poured, I believe it was Elisha, that he poured water. Maybe it was Joshua. He poured water on, the, on, on Moses or on Elijah's hand, he, which meant he served him. He ministered to him. He kept him refreshed. God give us servants. Let us not be so consumed with our name being in light that we, we forget that our job is to serve in the body of Christ. Our job is to be a servant. Jesus didn't come to, uh, to minister to everybody. He did, but he came to serve, to give himself for us. Why can't we take on that same spirit of serving? I'm not saying you need to, every time they have a fellowship at church, you the one got to go in there. I'm not saying that. You need to know where you are comfortable with serving. But wherever you're called to serve, be comfortable serving. Be able to serve and serve effectively. I'm serving now. I can't, I can't just wake up at 710 and do the necessities. And come in at 7, 14 and, and 30 seconds and get ready to, to serve you. I have to be able to have already written out, and I have. You can't see this, but this is a whole page of things the Lord gave me in October to prepare to serve you. God is thinking about us. He always has us on his mind. When we were started our ministry some years ago at Tabernacle, um, 30 whatever years ago, we one of the things our pastor called uh, us or required or asked that we would be, and that is that we will be minute men. And that men term is just not gender specific, but just minute, minute men. What did minute men do? They were ready to serve in any capacity at any moment. They were able to, to get involved instantly and adjust we need more people who are minute men. Just like Elisha. He quickly, you were exactly brother. And it, it taught us. You didn't have no three weeks to prepare for a message. You found out before the offering that you were speaking. And if you say you called to the Lord, you had about five minutes to have a message, and you didn't get up there and say, well, I just found out I was speaking. You didn't do that stuff. You got a call in your life. You need to be ready. You need to be ready. You need to be ready. We play too much when it comes to ministry. This is serious business. All right. God is calling us to our next. Let's be ready. When he knocks, when the opportunity comes, be ready. Beloved, be ready. Don't be getting ready. Go on, get ready now. That's what your mom and daddy said. Go on, get ready. Don't let me come back in here. Be ready for what God has next. I don't know what your next is. I don't even know what my next is. But I know who holds it. I know who's preparing it. I know who's getting me ready. And I want him to get you ready too. There's my brother who's watching. He didn't know when he was here serving that God was preparing him for such greater. 
but God will be strict. God is a strategic God. He knows what you're going to next. I want to be ready for my next. I don't want to have, I want to, I want him to, I want to have unexpected blessings. I want to have surprise doors open. I want blessings to chase me down and overtake me. I want God to do what only God will do. And I know you do too. Let's get ready for our next. All right, let's pray. My time is gone. Oh my gosh, my time is gone. Father, we thank you so much for what you've begun. Thank you. That you help us. Even though Elisha didn't know what was coming next, he was ready to assume the role of prophet. He went and studied and prepared when Elijah called. Help us to be ready. To be minute men. To be minute women. To be children who are being trained to follow you. To hear your voice. Open our ears that we can hear you. Every voice that's not yours, we cast it down. We don't want to hear anything outside of what your word agrees with. We value your word above what we see, above what we hear, and above what we feel. We value your word. Thank you for what you've begun in us. Every man, every woman, every child, what you've begun, what you've invested in us. Father, we want you to get a harvest out of our lives. We want you to get the glory out of our lives. We want to make your name great. Give us opportunity. Thank you for it even now. Let us not be ashamed to own your name, to magnify your name, to give you honor and glory and praise. We bless you. We thank you for all that you've done and for what you've promised and for what you're already orchestrating. We trust your strategy. We trust your plan, plan and that you are working it together for our good. That you will be our Jehovah Rapha. Heal us from the inside out. Heal us of our past. Heal us. God, order our steps. Could give us divine connections. Thank you for it, dear God. We receive it done in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus. And so it is. Amen. All right. Time's gone. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank you so much for popping on. Please share this video. Do you know the thing is, I believe that the word of God gives light. Let's spread the word of God. We spread cute, funny things. I do. But let's spread the word of God too. Let's because people need hope and it's going to be found in the word of God. All right, time's gone. Join me in the morning at 7.15. And um, yeah, I was going to tell you that my church is having 7 a.m. service on Christmas morning, but I'll post that later once we get a flyer done, okay? All right, so join me in the morning at 7.15 and we'll look again into the Word of God. Invite somebody to join you. Thank you to those of you who are hosting watch parties. Appreciate it. Please share and remember this, time spent in the Word of God is never wasted. And you've been graced for today. Have a great day, y'all. Please pray for someone else. All right. Peace.